without tahrif, without distorting the meaning, without ta'teel, without denying the meaning, without tamthil, likening Allah to his creation, and without tashbih uh, or takif, saying how. This is, by the way, this is the, this is the crucial point, which means that we believe Allah has a face, and Allah has two hands, and Allah has fingers, and Allah has a foot, and Allah has eyes. Pay attention. Allah is above the throne, above the creation. We don't limit him to a place. He's above his creation. Place is part of his creation. Allah is above everything. He descends to the lowest heaven as he wills every last third of every night. He speaks as he wills. He does as he wills. He will place his foot in Jahannam until it will say قط قط and read the ayah. يوم نقول لجهنم هل امتلأت وتقول هل من مزيد. The day we will say to Jahannam, are you filled? Are you filled? Are you full? It will say, is there any more? In the authentic hadith that الرب يضع قدمه تبارك وتعالى حتى ينزوي بعضه على بعض فتقول قط قط. Allah will place his foot until it will be squeezed to the corner. Jahannam will say enough, enough. We believe, and we believe that there's nothing like Allah. This is the most important point. There's nothing like Allah. So when we believe in Allah's face, we don't have any images of faces, and we're not thinking of human beings. Same thing goes for the hands, fingers, foot, eyes, and so on and so forth. Now the people of the Mu'tazilites are those who, uh, the Mu'tazilites are those who deny Allah's names and attributes. Uh, no, the Mu'tazilites are the ones who deny Allah's name, uh, attributes, and they believe in the names. The Jahmites, the Jahmiyyah, are those, and the Ghulat among them, they deny Allah's names and attributes. The Ashaira, they deny Allah's, they accept Allah's names, deny his attributes except seven. You will find that these to them, they will reject them because they say we're doing tanzi. We're trying to perfect, we're trying to grant perfection to Allah, glorify Him above these qualities. So you say to them, just to give you the summary, you say, look man, you're denying the fact that Allah has a face because we have faces? He will say yes. Even though Allah said in the Quran, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything upon earth will perish and the, the, the face of your Lord will remain full of glory and honor. Even though Allah said in the Quran, وَجْ You're going to deny it? Because why? We have faces, he will say yeah. Hands. Allah said to Iblis, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَنْ تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَي what prevented you from prostrating to that which I created with both of my hands? Allah said about Himself, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ Nay, but both of His hands are stretched out. Are you denying them? Because we also have hands? He will say yes. Say, okay, fair enough. Does Allah have a life? Hayat? He will say yes. Do you have a life? He will say yes. Say, then you must deny Allah's life because you have a life. You understand? Do you hear? Say yes. Does Allah hear? Yes. Akhi, you must deny Allah's hearing because you hear. And if you continue to do this, you don't have an object of worship anymore. You don't have anything anymore. You're lost. So you don't use this silly philosophical Greek-based analogy to understand Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. When the Prophet ﷺ was giving these narrations to the Sahaba, when he was telling them that Allah will smile, Allah will laugh, Allah will laugh, يضحك, Allah will laugh. He was telling them that the قلوب بين أصبعين من أصابع الله. Never use your hands. The hearts are between two fingers of the fingers of Allah. When Allah's Messenger ﷺ said this to the Sahaba, do you think they understood Arabic? Did they understand Arabic? Did they understand Arabic? They did. They know what asabi means. Did any one of them say, Oh, Mr. Bala, what does that really mean? Or did he say, That doesn't really mean fingers. It means, you know, status. It means situation. Never did he elaborate. Never did they question him. They took him face value. They understood it according to the apparent meaning. This is my job and yours. Why? Because they understood what Allah said. Laysa kemithli shay. There's nothing co equal to Allah. So we, we believe in that. 
And this is a belief system of Imam Ahmed, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, the whole Imams. This is what they believe. And many of the people who follow them blindly in fiqh do not believe in what they believe concerning Allah's names and attributes. You follow me? You know what we believe now? And you really must study this matter. So you, because you know, the shaitan will play tricks with you. You must have yaqeen. Wallahi, we have yaqeen, no doubt. No doubt, when Allah used the term in the Quran to describe himself, I don't dare to tell Allah no. I don't dare to do so. When the Messenger of Allah did not do so, and the Sahaba did not do so. So we believe in what Allah described himself with. The people of innovation and bid'ah, they don't. They will deny all of these. Concerning Qadr, we are not like the Qadariyya nor like the Jabariyya. The Qadariyya are those who say that everything, that Allah doesn't know what you do until after you do it. After you do something, Allah discovers that you did ABC. Jabariyya, they say, you have no choice. Everything you do, Allah forced you to do it. So Allah created you, forced you to sin, then placed you in Jahannam because of what He forced you to do. Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah say no. Allah Azza wa Jal gave us the free will, and our free will is conditioned to His free will. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ You will after Allah wills. But we don't know what the outcome of things is, so we have the decree, we have the free will. You can, uh, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wishes, whoever wills to believe, and whoever wills may disbelieve. Allah gave us the choice. So we're not like the Qadariyya or the Jabariyya. We're not like the Khawarij. Those who say that if you commit major sin, you're a kafir. If you drink alcohol, you have left Islam. If you commit adultery, you have left Islam. And this is extreme. Nor are we like the Murji'ah. Those who say that Iman has nothing to do with good deeds. Yani, they say, the Iman of Iblis is equal to the Iman of Abu Bakr. They say, the Iman of Iblis is equal to the Iman of Abu Bakr. And the Iman of the worst of this Ummah is equal to the Iman of Abu Bakr. Why? Because they believe in the principles. They believe there's Allah, there are angels, there are books, revelations, there's the last day, there's pre-decree. You don't have to do anything because of that. Whereas we believe what? Iman wa amal salih. Al Iman bid'un wa sittuna shu'ba a'laha qawlu la ilaha illallah wa annaha imatatul adha ala al-tariq wal hayahu shu'batun min al-Iman. The Prophet ﷺ said Iman is 60 some branches, the highest of which is saying la ilaha illallah, and the least is removing harm from the way. Isn't removing harm in action? He was describing what? Iman. So part of Iman is moving harm, moving filth out of the people's way. And Haya is a branch of Iman. And we have many evidences which support that. We are not like the Shia who declare the Sahaba to be Kuffar and, uh, and deify Ali. Nor are we like the Khawarij who uh, did the other, who declared the Sahaba to be Kuffar. The Shia have one, they glorified Ali, and the Khawarij they did the opposite. And we have two opposite extremes. So Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah are on a middle path between all of these deviant groups concerning the matters of belief. Concerning the belief in Allah's names and attributes, they believe in what Iman is and the definition of Iman, they believe in Qadr and they believe in our, our position concerning the Sahaba, we travel upon a middle path. Brothers and sisters, we need to learn these matters. Have we learned them? Have you read a book on Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah? Have you read a book about the belief about the Sahaba? Have you read a book about the belief in, among Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah? What is Iman? And is righteousness part of it? Have we learned these matters? Do we know them? If not, then we need to strive, as I said in the beginning, not to just earn a living and increase our you know, sustenance. No, we need to strive to learn what this is, the one path, one tariqah, one firqah that will not go to the fire, that will be upon the way of the Prophet and Sahaba, you must believe what they believe. They knew these matters pretty clearly. We need to follow their way. Tayyip. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, al Ta'if al Mansur al Firq al Najah, they value Tawheed. And this is from an email, Brother Sand Barakallah. They value Tawheed. The most important thing in our deen is the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal wa Ta'ala and singling Him out in worship. So we don't entertain grave worshipping. We don't entertain uh, calling upon other than Allah, doing tawassul through the creatures, uh, you know, seeking barakah from people. All of this is not accepted among Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are for Allah the Lord of the worlds. 
بذلك أمرت وأنا أول مسلم لا شريك له. Allah has no partners with him. This is what I have been commanded among the first. I am among the first who submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. We don't entertain shirk in any of its various manifestations. Tawheed is fundamental. And this is the da'wah. This is what every prophet was sent to do. And this is what every follower of the prophet did after the prophet passed away. They lived up to the call of tawheed. Not anything else before that. This is among the characteristics of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ أَلَا لِلَّهَ الدِّينُ الْخَالِصِ So worship Allah, being sincere to him in the religion. Isn't it for Allah the sincere religion? لَا تَجْعَلْ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاءً أَخَرْ Do not make with Allah other gods, other rivals. All these are ayat where Allah is emphasizing the importance of Tawheed. So, let me give you the summary. The main difference between At-Ta'if al-Mansura wal-Firq al-Najiyah and the other 72 sects is two things, At-Talaqi wal-Istidlal. At-Talaqi is the resource, the source from which we take our deen, is from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the Ijma' not aql. The Mu'tazila, the source is not, is not this, the aql, the mind come first. And like a razi and others, Fakhr al-Razi, he said that the ayat of the Quran are not yaqiniya. Then, then they do not, they do not provide certainty. Aql, your mind, is what will give you certainty. For the ayat of Allah, they're doubtful. Ajib. And many other who fought, made a mistake, that's a huge mistake, but I'm telling you where the error is, so you will know. And a lot of the Mufassireen had deviated in terms of this matter <coughs> of the belief system. So, at talaqi wal istidlal. The source is Quran, Sunnah, Ijma'ah. Not what I think and what I understand. And al talaqi this is the talaqi. Istidlal is the actual application of the evidence per the situation, like the khawarij. They will take an ayah from the Qur'an, which may indicate that if you commit a major sin, you're a disbeliever, and they will apply it all across the board. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah don't do that. They look at the general understanding of the ayat and the narrations, and they deduce the ruling from the general understanding. From the what? The general understanding. Because some ayat further explain other ayat. You may read the ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَيُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah does not forgive that you ascribe any partners with Him, and He forgives whatever is lesser than that to whomever He wills. And if you understand this ayah alone, you may understand that Allah will not forgive anyone who committed shirk ever. And not only dying. If you don't read other ayat where Allah says, إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا, then you will think that this ayah means that Allah will never forgive you once you've committed shirk once in your life. You follow me? So you have to look at all the evidences. To do, who do you, do you need? Ulama. You need scholars to do this. So this is the matter of istidlal. And I will conclude this lecture with the following. The, in, the famous and wonderful statement of Imam Malik, rahimahullah. Man ibtada'a fil islami bid'atan fara'aha hasana faqad za'ama anna muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khana al-risala. Fa'inna Allah yaqul اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا فما لم يكن يوم إذن دينا فلا يكون اليوم دينا ولن يصلح آخر هذه الأمة إلا ما صلح به أولها whoever innovates introduces something into Islam and he perceives it as something good he has alleged that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has betrayed the message of Islam because Allah said in the Quran, this day on the day of Arafah, I have completed your religion for you. I have perfected your religion for you, Akfan, and I have completed my favor upon you. And I am pleased with Islam as a way of life for you. Imam Malik said, whatever was not part of the deen when this ayah was revealed, on that day cannot become part of the deen today. And nothing will rectify 